The rider stepped down and gave me his honest smile again. Much obliged, he said. That's neighborly of you. Glad to do it, says I, and I was. I guess you could say Billy Christmas and me hit it off right from the start. We got to know each other well over the next few weeks, and the better I knowed him, the more I liked him. He was a year older than me, easygoing and good-natured, and if he didn't talk much, I guess I more than made up for that. He did tell me he had grown up on his daddy's horse ranch near Lander, Wyoming, and that his mother was a full-blood Shoshone woman. Like mine, his daddy had passed away some years previous, and I could tell Billy still missed him. He used to talk about that Wyoming ranch like it was the best part of paradise. He would describe the creek that ran through the place, the way the hills lay, and how the house and barns were set up until I almost felt I had been there. He said he took work as a bronc rider to help pay for the place, and that it would all be his one day. Billy was dark of skin, with hair the blue-black hue of a raven's wing, and I figured he got his coloring from his maw. There were thirteen mighty tough horses in the rough string, including a few snaky old hammerheads, three or four green broke mustangs, and a couple of genuine man-haters. They was hard to get on and harder to stay on, but Billy just took them in his stride like it was all in a day's work, which, for him, I guess it was. My pa and me used to go mustanging when I was a kid. We broke wild horses to ride, after which pa would sell them to the cow outfits over along the big porcupine. I had knowed some fine bronc stompers in those days and one or two good ones since, but it didn't take me long to decide that Billy Christmas was among the very best I'd seen. Some riders abuse horses and break them down by harsh treatment. Some handle every horse the same, as if the animals were stamped out of metal by a blacksmith. I suppose those fellers don't know any better, or maybe they're in a hurry to get the work done and draw their pay. Whatever the reason, those men don't usually hold their jobs for long. That kind of treatment spoils a horse, and no decent cow outfit will put up with it. The truth is, every horse is different. Some learn quick, and some never do. Some have been mistreated and fight back out of fear. Some are stubborn and willful, and a few horses just go hog-wild and snake-crazy for no apparent reason. A good rough-string rider gets to know his animals and handles each one according to its need. That's how Billy Christmas did the job. I never saw him lose his temper, and he treated his string with kindness. Of course, there's kindness, and then there's kindness. Sometimes a horse needs a rider who will get above him and sap him out to where he changes his attitude. That was the case with the big gelding from Billy's string the boys called Hoodlum. Hoodlum tipped the scales at 1,200 pounds, and most of it was high explosive. He'd had a lot of luck at bucking his riders off, and he'd hurt a few of them pretty bad. 